El Duce, The Mentors. You guys keep asking for it, so what the heck? Today I'll tell my tale of El Duce from The Mentors and how it relates to Fanatic Fanzine, September 1993. Welcome back, man, to Bloody F Mess Official. I've had several people in the last week say, hey, man, how about a story about a band called The Mentors or El Duce, the singer and drummer of that band? Well, I don't have a huge story, and it's very late here in Southern Oregon, as normal. Yes, I'm a night owl, uh, but I do have a tale. I will tell you a backstory quickly for those of you that are not familiar with El Duce. El Duce basically was a guy that fronted a band called The Mentors that started back in the 1970s. It was a three-piece band uh, out of Seattle originally, transplanted into L.A. You know, later. Uh, there was three guys. This band uh, is and was. They still consist of uh, different members keeping the name going, although Dr. Heathen Scum, uh, of course, is still the main man that runs the ship these days. Uh, you know, of course, these guys have real names. There's no reason I should, you know, bust the bubble. I know their names. They're on Facebook, and they're accessible. And then there's uh, not only Dr. Heathen Scum on bass, but a guy named Sicky Wifebeater on the guitar. Look, man, the mentors are, like, very infamous. They uh, are half shtick and half kind of demented. Some of it's just funny, some of it's real, but for the most part, the stuff you would think is real is kind of just shtick, and the other part is obvious. When El Duce was alive, the singer for The Mentors, he was a character. He was a very shocking guy, ball-headed, uh, big pot belly from drinking copious amounts of alcohol, very, very outspoken. Uh, a lot of people loved The Mentors. But just as many hated the mentors and took them seriously. However, I always knew better, man. I knew that part of it was shtick. Uh, very sexist band. Very much a turnoff to a lot of people. Uh, very homophobic band. But again, I've got to tell you, for a fact, those guys were just shtick in that department. Because from what I know, El Duce really wasn't homophobic. Uh, and to what I know, he wasn't racist either at all, or I probably wouldn't have been an Adam fan if he was like hardcore either one of those directions. But they weren't. They had a lot of comedy elements, man, like humor. The mentors were funny, and they continue, like I said, to this day. But do you know that El Duce was the guy that was accused of being, uh, well, the would-be assassin for Kurt Cobain? Yep, I said it. You know, there's a lot of conspiracies about did Kurt Cobain kill himself? Oops, you can't say those words. Did he off himself uh, or not? And well, the thing is, from what I've gathered in my own research, I don't think he off himself. I think uh, it was done with the help of another. And El Duce was on camera when a British film crew came to his home. He had been drinking. They asked him from England, doing a documentary about the death, mysterious death of Kurt Cobain, we heard you were offered a, a substantial amount of money to knock Kurt Cobain off. Is it true? And uh, basically, that's not what they asked, but it came around to that. And they were kind of like freaking out. They ran with it. He goes, well, I'm not going to name names, but I didn't do it. But Courtney Love offered me to do it. Now I know who did it. And they're kind of like, huh? They had no idea that he really was going to come this clean. But having had been drinking, El Duce was talking. And not only did he talk, and this stuff is on YouTube, man. You can find this on YouTube. Not only does he talk, but he actually goes, I'm not going to name names, but I know who actually did it. And he dropped the guy's name. Here's the deal. El Duce says he was offered, I think, 10 grand or 50 grand uh, to off Kurt Cobain. And, you know, he said no. I think it was 50 grand. And he said not interested. And uh, But he told a friend of his, and his friend uh, apparently did it. And he dropped the guy's name, of course. Well, anyway, El Duce took mm, at least two polygraph tests with two major law enforcement agencies. With one of the most, uh, well, a guy that was known as being one of the biggest specialists for doing polygraph tests. Uh, polygrapher, that's what they're called. And he passed with flying colors, both of these polygraph tests. So to this day, there's a big controversy of about Kurt Cobain. Did he do it himself or not? I don't believe he did it himself. 
Uh, I also know a prominent spiritual person in the spiritual community. This is a, I'm not going to drop his name because I think he might get offended. But he was having a, well, he was sharing a bottle of $300 wine with Chris Novoselic from uh, Nirvana up in Seattle. At Chris, either he's got a mansion or a real big house. Well, as they were talking, he was telling this prominent spiritual uh, guy that, uh, you know, about Nirvana. He didn't know about Nirvana. He wasn't a rock and roll guy. And he said, my buddy from the spiritual community says, Chris Novoselic told him, the hole did it. I'm like, the hole did it? You mean Courtney Love from Hole? He's like, yes, that's the name. He told me that Courtney Love from Hole, uh, the hole was behind it. I said, well, Hole's a rock band. He goes, okay. Well, Chris Novoselic told me that. Well, Turns out Chris Novoselic plays bass for this guy's band once in a while when he comes through Seattle. So I don't doubt what was told to me. My story with El Duce. I was running a, a, a fanzine called Fanatic uh, back in the uh, late, uh, actually it was early 90s. I did four or five issues. This issue here in particular is issue number three. Davy Jones from the Monkees I interviewed. This is part two of my Tiny Tim interview. Mary Vivian Pierce from the uh, John Waters films, and Reverend Ivan Stang from the Church of the Subgenius were the people I interviewed, and El Duce, very controversial guy. Here's what happened, man. I obtained El Duce's phone number. Everybody kept saying, man, you should be uh, knowing El Duce. How come you don't know El? I'm like, well, I've never been introduced to El. So what happened was, is El, uh, I got his number. I called uh, wherever he was staying at in Los Angeles, I believe. And some lady that he was living with, or girl, would answer, and he would just be completely out of it, drunk, on almost every time I called him. Well, one of the times I called and he was on the phone, he was kind of like, yes, I'll send it to me in the mail. <laughs> like, send me the interview in the mail. So I said, okay. So I got the address, wrote down a list of you know, 14, 15 questions, Zipped him off to El Duce in California. And what do you know? A couple weeks later, I got the uh, envelope. El Duce, California. Open it up, and sure enough, in his own handwriting, there's El Duce's interview completed. So I published it in Fanatic Fanzine back in, again, dun -da -da, August of 93. Here's what the layout looks like. Very crude, old school uh, you know, it's the way they were done back then. Fanzines were magazines done by the fans. And you can see all the bizarre photos, you know, Bel Duce, of course, in there. Um, just uh, a wild guy, you know. And uh, I'm going to read from you, I'm going to read to you this interview with El Duce. For those of you that are a fan... This will be a treat. For those of you that don't care, you may think, this sucks. But whatever you do, could you take the time right now to just click that subscribe button? It's free. Maybe leave me a comment, man, and uh, give it a like. Okay, here we go. My interview with El Duce, as recited by moi. Hey, you perverts. I finally got this here interview with the leader, drummer, and vocalist of that band of sickos, The Mentors. Yep. This is a through-the-mail interview with the infamous El Duce. I tried to get a phone interview with the man, but every time I call him, he's either not home or too drunk to do an interview, let alone talk. El Duce sent this interview to me from his home in filth-filled California. Filth filled. Remember, this is 1993. It was a whole different me. And El Duce was still alive. Interview by Bloody F. Mess. When did the mentors form and where? El Duce says, and I'll try to do my best El Duce impersonation to answer the questions. Well, we formed in Seattle, Washington in the spring of 76. What was the last real job you had? Real job. And El Duce says to me, washing dishes, <laughs> washing dishes in Seattle a few years ago. Other than that, getting a good BJ or RJ. <laughs> Tell me the wildest thing that happened on your recent tour. He says, probably filming some groupie porn in Milwaukee. <laughs> Typical L. 
What is your favorite alcoholic beverage? That's hard to answer. Vodka, gin, whiskey. Probably the most consumed is malt liquor or beer. Yeah, he was heavily into his alcohol. What are your favorite drugs? El Duce says, Pot, Valium, Librium, Codeine, Thorazine, Sominex, and Sleepies. <laughs> Told you, the guy always had a sense of humor. But was he kidding? Uh, then he goes on, uh, We reviewed your first solo tape in issue number one. How many copies have you sold so far of your solo tape? Well, I lost count after 600,000 copies. <laughs> I just released my latest, Booze and Broads, on Mindboggler Records, cassette only so far this month. What do you think of gays in the military? Because back then that was a big subject. Uh, it was very controversial in the American press, of course. Really bizarre. Gays in the military, like, why do you care what people do in the bedroom if they're fighting for your country, right? So he's asked what he thinks about that. I think it's sick. <laughs> now I'll never join the Marines. Imagine taking a shower next to a, the F word with three word letters. And then he gets a boner. You'd have to kill him. <laughs> so this is funny stuff to me, man. I don't take it serious. So I, hopefully you do. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, does alcohol affect your erection? No. Who are your favorite bands? The Mentors, myself, and my other band, The Sex Devils. Uh, my El Duce voice is getting annoying. Uh, how old are you now, El Duce? 35. What are your three favorite pleasures in life? Effing, eating, or S-H-I-T-T-I-N-G? <laughs> or... Well, do I want to say that or not? Oh, yeah, I do. Beer, of course. Uh, favorite forms of sex? God, why did I have to, have to go there? And he says, doggy style or self-pleasure, but he didn't say the word self-pleasure. Can you give me a list of all the Mentors releases? Get Up and Die. Mentors Live at the Whiskey Cafe de Grand. Mentors Mystic Sampler Number 1. Mentors Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll. Mentors, you asked for it. Mentors, up the dose. Mentors, re-release of up the dose on cassette tape. Mentors, rock Bible. Mentors, El Duce solo. The man, the myth, the legend. Cassette tape. El Duce, blues and broads. Cassette tape. And finally, what is the future looking like for the mentors? To put a record out soon, to go on tour, late summer or early fall, around September and October. See you soon, I hope. We might go to Europe or Australia. We've been getting some offers. Oh, well, keep it. Well, I better not say what he says at the end. It's pretty perverted and bad. <laughs> the end. So the story is after he passed away or died on those train tracks, because that's what happened. Once he came out and dropped that guy's name that supposedly whacked Cobain, it wasn't long before they found El Duce on some train tracks dead. And here's the weird part, man. Somebody had beheaded the guy before he died. And the guy that supposedly whacked him, uh, not sure if it's, you know, Alan Wrench or not. I, that's just the rumors that are all over the internet. Uh, kill Alan Wrench, never met the guy. Not saying he did it. I don't really know. I have my theories. Uh, I won't say them here. But I will say that I know that guy did not whack himself. And L's head was found. He was behind. He was sitting next to the body, according to the report I read. And then he was cut in half by that train. You don't just end up on a pair of train tracks. Here's the weird thing. 15 minutes before he died, there was witnesses that say he was with the very guy that he name dropped in that video. 15 minutes before his death. So there was some heavy action that went on. And I guess El Duce was incredibly wasted that day. And... Apparently, there's a witness, too, that comes out and says that once uh, El Duce drops this guy's name, Alan Wrench's name in the video uh, about the, uh, you know, Courtney loves to offer, 
that guy came to L's house and was storming in looking for him at different places and different witnesses are testifying to this. So it's a very deep rabbit hole that goes down and down and down. And I appreciate you listening to my story about Fanatic uh, fanzine interview with El Duce. Um, quickly, uh, back in the uh, like 20... 12, I believe. We opened for the Mentors once or twice when they played in Medford, Oregon. And I was in a band at the time called the Bloody Mess Rock Circus. And um, it was a lot of fun playing with those guys. But there's too many people take them totally seriously. I gotta be honest, I was offered to be on their tribute album. They asked if I wanted to contribute a track. At first I was going to do it. But then when I found out that it was called a tribute to R.A blank E, rock, I was like, nah, I've got, you know, at the time, a daughter, actually daughters now, but I've got daughters, and uh, I also have a conscience, and I'm also not a sexist pig that's going to be on an album called The Tribute to R.A. blank E, rock. Not going to happen, man. There's a lot of weird rules that YouTube has. You can't say certain words, or you can't make money off YouTube. I'm not even freaking monetized right now, man, but uh, I'm still trying to get used to following in those rules. So much censorship. What is this? Old school Russia? Come on, man. Have some. Grow some, America. Let us have free speech. What's wrong with you people? Man, I've got cotton mouth. Woo-wee! Next time, note to self, bring a glass of water when telling a story. Thanks for listening to my El Duce story. Uh, I've got another story coming tomorrow. Nothing like the mentors. But hey, man, up the dose. And remember, subscribe, like, comment, and share. And thanks to all of you who have become addicted to the channel. I've got my pleasures to, uh, my guilty pleasures on YouTube that I'm totally addicted to. I get it, and I plan to keep delivering for you. You asked for it. The mentors. El Duce, rest in peace. Ha <laughs> ha.